Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Stream 2. We've got LGD Gaming going up against the side of Cloud9. I'm OD Pixel. I'm going to be joined by Cinder and here for this best of three. It is, of course, the first round of this group stage today. And Cinder and the draft so far, nothing too surprising. No, it's very standard in this metagame right now that Tusk is the overall first pick. Uh, it's There's been a couple of series we've seen where he got picked late, and that was surprising for me. Um, and Cloud9 grabbing a Shadow Fiend first on the Radiant, also pretty normal here. As are pretty standard as well. I'm not sure what Cloud9 are going to grab here. Slaughter is available. That's nice, maybe nice. the biggest surprise so far is how far he's going into the draft. Yeah, I mean, Slaughter. I mean, if they're able to get it, here's the third pick. If LGD themselves ignore it in terms of the picks and bans, that would be really... With a Shadow Fiend and a Dazzle, um, already the physical DPS is is going to be off the charts. We'll see what LGD do now here with this second pickup. Uh, it's going to be the AA, so something to counteract, obviously, the healing and potentially the grouping up the Cloud9 might look to do with the Dazzle and his Shadow Wave and the SF with a potential early mechanism. So uh, always nice to pick up. And uh, the Broodmother being banned out as well, just, you know... Not a hero that you want to let through, and a hero that someone like AA can't really deal with in the lane as a support. It's been there's been a couple of games where Brood just won the game yeah. more or less uh, with a surprise pick. We've seen it in phase two, sometimes even fifth pick. I think that's happened once in the tournament. Um, and here's another meta hero that just gets banned out. Very standard so far from both teams. The Ember Spirit ban out from Cloud9. Very popular hero for this moment as well. And you've got to think about what players you're playing against. Maybe is an incredible Ember Spirit player. Perhaps perhaps the best player in the world in this hero. You reckon? Okay. He's one of top yeah. three. I think the top three are maybe Ferrari and Sumail. in this hero. Okay. Pretty sure. You wouldn't put E kind of He's probably, on the edge? He's probably... I guess he's fourth. He's getting coming. better. Yeah, it's it's hard. I haven't seen his Ember Spirit play enough okay. uh, compared to the yeah. others, and I'm mainly yeah. referring to uh, TI5 and their performance there. Oh, okay. I the mean, yeah, at uh, uh, yeah, the non -yon. it was very good. He's Ember. Mm -hmm. It was it was certainly a turn up. But uh, okay, Night Stalker being banned out here from the, by the side of LGD, and uh, the Wind Ranger is going to be taken away from uh, by Cloud9. They're actually going to go in with that Clockwork pick here at this section, so cementing their their offlane. So now LGD, they might be able to try and pick something around that and with this third pick. I mean, still, but yeah, but but why aren't you picking Slardar? I was going to, yeah. I was, they I have the Slardar. It's that. insane. Yeah. Well, for that that moment, yeah, the a Great minus armor strat. Um, a little bit surprising for me that C9 are not grabbing it. They might <sighs> think it's overrated or that they have the counters for it. Do they not play on the offlane C9? Is it just some That's another do? possible. Well, yeah. even if they don't, they could safe lane it here yeah. too. Uh, I think it's I think it's a very good pick. Reserve. Guess we should clarify. By the way, we were talking about this before we went live. Uh, it's a little confusing that it's seemingly MMY and and X, his old alias, are playing on the same team. Oh, that uh, was what MMY used to call himself. Yes, ah, he used to call himself X confused, double yeah. exclamation okay. mark. But yeah. that is ROTK. Yes. Uh, captaining LGD Gaming. Uh, I'm not sure why he changed to MMY's old nickname. 
Maybe MMY is just controlling both. MMY you know? was used to, uh, was known as Weapon X because he was okay. he used that name in in Dota One. There was a phase when he was regarded as perhaps the best mid laner in the world. He doesn't he really? plays support now. Back in the day, in the was... 2010 version of Ehome, which was yeah. the best, perhaps the best team of all time relative to its competition at the time. Oh, he was just what, they were miles ahead of everyone. Extremely else. good. Um, that time. MMY did play mid as a X double exclamation mark. He was incredible. Uh, but yeah, RTK may be honoring his current teammate. It's, it's strange. I have never seen this before, but... as a gyro for uh, Siler, most likely. Very click comfort pick for LGD Gaming. And uh, one of his best. Yes, absolutely. Another, another real signature pick. And something that works very nice, of course, with the Tusk when they start to look for the, the early fights. So Tusk comes around, uh, joins the lane for a bit of a gank, just getting themselves in there nice and close and personal with the Rocket Barrage cooldown. And uh, also something that I guess you can kind of use to play around the clockwork. I mean, we've seen before situations where clockwork goes in, he cogs someone on the enemy side, but then the Tusk is able to throw the shards into the cogs and he can actually push out their allies and save them from being trapped. And easily just snowball yeah. through and, and pick them up on the, way. Them on the way. Yeah. Uh, there, I think Tusk is one of the absolute best heroes in Dota against Clockwork. Yeah. Um, so another reason that it's a little bit surprising we see it from Cloud9. It might just be that big of a comfort pick for them. Uh, that they feel like it's worth it. Or they have some sort of follow-up here that's going to justify the Clockwork a lot more. It's going to be a Bane, which also went in pretty far in the draft relative to its, uh, to its status in the pro scene right now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a great pick against Gyro, though. I really like it against Gyro. And Feeble ruins Flat Cannon, and he's a hero who has to come in fairly close to attack. Uh, at least one key target for the Flat Cannon to work, and you can grip him from a distance. Yeah, yeah, I guess looking at LGD's draft so far, the fact that they are going to be relying on that flat cannon damage in these fights, and, and especially if Cloud9 can get the armor ticking up with the weave, and, and as you said, that if the gyro as uh, damage is, is really negated by that, that enfeeble, it's it's going to really hinder the LGD when they come to the fights. But we'll see what they pick up here with this fourth pick. Still looking really for that mid laner and that second support, if that Tusk is indeed going to be on the off lane as we've come to expect it. We'll see what they they do in response here. I mean, do they need to worry more about this Bane in terms of getting stuff to cancel it? And okay, well, there we go. So they pick themselves up Alina, someone that's going to be able to play around the Bane kind of nicely. Something, something else that's going to be able to offer to interrupting the Fiends group. We'll possibly see the Yules come out for the man. And also, another hero, I guess, that can kind of work nicely around the clock. If the clock ever goes in and cogs, yes, he can hit himself out, but there's going to be that little bit of time where Lena can kind of walk in and try and get the stun out with a light strike to, to start a fight going the favor of LGD's way. It's also a multi-purpose pick. It can go mid, and they can do the classic dual lane offlane Tuscalina, which is very powerful. Uh, so they keep their options open here, and Cloud9 don't know for sure what this hero is doing. So they're going to ban a support in Bounty Hunter, expecting this to be a mid lena for LGD. And with LGD having the the final pick, they could completely turn this around on Cloud9 and get a mid lena that they weren't expecting. Because at this point, they're thinking, okay, it's probably a lena mid against our Shadow Fiend. They're mentally preparing for how they're going to deal with that situation and draft their fifth pick around it. And if they swap it around for LGD, that could be a, a pretty nice move here. Yeah, I, I really do like seeing Lena's being picked up against the lineup with the Dazzle, because it really kind of makes in every fight there's going to be the mind game to the Dazzle. It doesn't matter if the hero's still got a fair bit of health. You've always got to be worried about that Laguna Blade burst, so that you've got a kind of preemptively shallow grave, which then as the side of LGD, you can play around and and you know that Dazzle's going to be forced to use it earlier and earlier each team fight as Lena kind of scales up through the game. So I, I like in that sense. And as so LGD with the final ban, they take away the clinks. I mean, kind of like the slider in the sense that it's a physical DPS position one that's going to be to roam around the map, be very aggressive, and with the Dazzle and the SF, there's going to be that synergy. So taking that away from Cloud9, I mean, Slada is still there, and they do have a Bane in lane if they want to try and set up something, you know, closing that with the Crush. Do you think they're still thinking about that, or at this point, are they just they're just not interested in the Slada this game? I think if you're Razor. interested, okay. if you're interested in Slaughter, you would have picked it already. Yeah. That's yeah. just that's what I think. Yeah. Uh, Razor is an interesting choice. It's a secondary way of draining or removing physical damage Great from a single target. It's good with Bane. It's good against Gyro. They're targeting Siler very hard this game. I would imagine the Clockwork is even going to go for a Blade Mill, which allows the hero to actually dual Gyrocopter in the Cogs. Whereas if you don't have it, you just die every time you hook shut in, basically. Uh, so. Earthshaker last. So it is a maybe Lena in the mid lane. And they will be running a double supports with a Shaker. 
and an offlane tusk. Most likely, they could also play shaker offlane and support with the tusk if they think it's better. Um, do you think you want the levels on your tusk this game? Yes. So you'd imagine they're not going to do the shaker offlane. Yeah, I, I think it's too risky. It's yeah. also not that good anymore, and it's a very difficult game to play core shaker in against the clockwork. Uh, yeah. Primarily, but also the lane he's going to have if he goes off lane will be very difficult for him to handle. Yeah. Okay. And it looks like. Oh, we'll see if that is going to be the case. So, oh, RTK at the moment putting himself on the shaker. We'll see how that correlates to in game. But, I mean, it kind of drafts, draft wise. Overall, do you feel that. Anyone's coming out with a stronger upper hand here, or do you think both have got a clear? Game plan, and, and both can, can work in this matchup. Mm, I like LGD's draft more. I know the team's playstyle and players quite a bit better than Cloud9. Um, but just from an LGD perspective, they've got everything they like. They are very much five-man oriented. They like playing late game. They're very good at defending high ground. Pushing high ground against this team is an absolute nightmare. There are so many traps you can do. You can get Fissure blocked, you can get Ice Sharded in, there's a cooldown that can follow through. If you get hit by Ancient Apparition Ult, that can set you up. Like The, the number of options LGD have, and that's just for high ground defense. You can, transfer, or you can uh, transfer a lot of that into just regular team fights where LGD's options are plenty. And I feel like Cloud9's is a little bit more limited in uh, what ways they can engage. A lot of pressure is actually on the clockwork to set them up. Indeed, I know I've always said, talking in the draft, they, they feel very confident in picking up clock for MSS. It's, it was a lot of other options. that We've seen other teams go for very different decisions, like the Slada, but clock nonetheless was the pickups. They have a, a lot of faith in this hero, so we'll see if it's going to be rightfully put there. At the moment, LGD positioning themselves here for this top rune. So MSS is going to be there. We'll see if he tries to go for uh, some funky plays there with the cogs, potentially, and try and take it away. He's so dead if he does that. It's, you yeah, can't do this against a tough level one. He's not even going to try, yeah. He's playing it safe. Playing the right call here, and bottom run will go the way of Ritsu, uh, playing in the mid lane. I think Ritsu mostly has played carry for this team. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure. And then, the only experts in. Yeah, well... I'm, I'm relying on you here. They might have just swapped around for this particular game just because they think it's better to uh, to put the Razor safe lane or that Brax isn't very comfortable in the Shadow Fiend. Or maybe they swapped lanes around since I last saw them play. Um, regardless, it is going to be the Bane Razor lane that we talked about, the synergy between Nightmare into Static Link. Pretty pretty strong. Yeah, so they choose to offlane the Shaker. It's a little bit surprising to me. I mean, I, I guess as we talked about the fact that the Tusk against the Clock, it can allow you to get kills. You know, closing the gap, getting inside the Cogs potentially with the Gyro, with the Rocket Barrage. You have got that kill potential with this trial lane that LGD are running up top. But as you said as well, it's going to leave the, the Shaker a little bit vulnerable on the bottom lane. It's certainly not going to be the easiest of lanes here for him to get something out of down bottom. I mean, mid lane at the moment, so Ritsu on the SF. He's had a bit, little bit of help there from the Dazzle, trying to get those early Necro stacks up in the lane against maybe, which he's uh, certainly going to need some help against, because maybe at the moment he's doing fine on his own, 5 for 1 against the 4 for 0. And we'll see how this matchup kind of, of ends up going, because it's definitely one I feel that if the Lina gets the edge in XP and gets a good timing on the level 6, the lane can be pretty hard for an SF, actually soon. This is one of SF's hardest matchups. Uh, Lina outranges him, Lina can play super aggressively very early on. Um, there's Shadow Fiend is a very weak hero in mid for the first two or three levels, and then he just starts raising, harassing with that, or pushing out waves and getting runes. But until that point, Lina dominates this lane. So I agree with the choice of putting Dazzle there. Now the problem is, with how long Dazzle was in there, 1437 on the Dazzle by the way, Ritsu is getting out leveled uh, by almost a full level already against mm -hmm. Mavis Lina, and that's kind of worrying. Because that it basically extends the, the period in which uh, Lina can dominate here. He did get the CS, though, for Dazzle's help, so it's a little bit of a trade-off. Oh, and top lane, uh, MSS. Uh, he's going to find MMY snowballing in. He's just going to even the walk down here with the battery assault. Uh, so that'll, that'll be all it is, because DDC turns up, and yeah, MSS just pops the cogs. So he'll keep himself safe and back up. 14.37 here. We'll grab the DD. And looking to go towards mid lane on some maybe, but 
It's only a few slaps, just harassing the leaner back, mm -hmm. trying to create some more space here for Ritsu on Nessa. He has a second skill point. He could have tried to go for a poison touch there, but I don't think they would have found the kill. And 1 for 3 7 really wants to keep the skill point if possible for a potential necessary grave as LGD could have plans Ooh, of ganking. Top lane. With... MSS, he's got to be careful here because he's caught between a Gyrocopt and DDC on the air. And DDC with the body blocks here beautifully, allowing Sylar to close the gap. He's going to try and look for the neutral deny. Will he be able to find it? No, he won't. Sylar gets the final touch in. And that's going to be a safe lane Gyro picking up first blood for LGD. It's it's very difficult playing gyro against uh, or sorry playing um, clockwork against oh, gyro lane. in lane. And look at this snowball rotation sets up the light strike array. There is a dazzle there, and he will skill the shallow grave, so it's going to allow them to try and turn. They're looking for maybe, maybe he's going to be able to get himself out, and will be able to bottle himself back up. So nice attempt from M and Y there with a the rotation, but also very nice reaction there from one four three seven, getting himself in and keeping Ritsu alive on the SF. If Hogwarts had one point rocket, he would actually kill Lena there. That would have been such a big difference for him, giving him level three and a half probably and putting him back in the game. This one point in battery assault. I'm actually surprised that MSS went for it in this lane because his kill potential alone against a gyro plus tusk lane is non existent. So mm. it doesn't really provide much for him. Uh I like the thought of Going into a game like this where you may be the underdog, I guess that's fair to say, and feeling like you can play aggressively and just you need to put pressure with a skill like Battery Assault. But in my in my book, this is a max rocket game. Yeah, I think he potentially just skilled it, you know, when the snowball came in onto the river and he felt that he could try and go for a bit of a rundown on Tusk. He kind of skilled it then, so maybe not the initial plan. And as I said, I won't be surprised if we do see him go back for just putting the extra points into rocket and leaving just the one in the battery. Yeah, the other thing is, when you go for this build, you can't farm. If you had Rocket, he would probably have a few extra CS right now, so that could have been a bottle, if that's the build he's going for, or working his way toward uh, upgraded boots. Instead, he doesn't even have boots yet. Uh, so the trade-off for this, it's a very high-risk, high-reward kind of build. Uh, getting battery assault on level 2 when you have a hard lane. And he should definitely skill Rocket now. Yeah, and we saw Savage down the bay just hanging around mid with that Invis rune. Seeing if you could set something up onto maybe, but maybe was was aware and, and just kept it very safe, kept it back. It won't get caught out there by the aggression of Cloud9. And a lot of attention has been given from Cloud9 towards that mid to try and help Ritsu out. And it's working at the moment, 27 for 4. He's keeping up his farm on par with maybe's Lena, but maybe he's been doing on his own, whereas SF has required more resources from the side. It doesn't matter too much though, because looking at the CS of the two safe laners, 29 to 14, 20 to 18, it's it's going fine in that respect. So all things said and done across the board, it's fairly even between both sides at this point of the game. Yeah, then it's about who has the better advantage from a transitioning later into the game. And mm -hmm. I think a sacrifice shaker is a lot stronger than a sacrifice clock, because Fissure is a great tool and Clockwork doesn't really do much in fights until he's level six. And, again, LGD with very good comfort picks, and I think also, arguably, a very, very strong support duo in the mid-game that has a lot of potential to just counter the two other supports. The Bane grip is very easy to stop with the Dusk or with the offlane Shaker, and the Dazzle is also countered by the, the AA, so individually they have a very good matchup. And this is really nice here. As soon as they get level 6 on the Lena, they want to try and find some blood. They want to get some action. They're going to move into 1, 4, 3, 7, and they're set up. But the Shallow Grey comes out in time. The Shards will be there, so he's not going to be able to get himself out. But they might be able to turn around and get themselves a kill in reaction. Hey, man, why can he get himself out? Looks like he can. The stun from maybe comes out nicely onto oh. 2. Buys the wow. time to get out. <laughs> he almost blocked maybe on the wrong side. Oh, <laughs> oh that would have been horrible. That would have been some mushy stuff. Oh. A little bit. Yeah, he had a hard game yesterday. Definitely did. Awesome. Did. Well, 2 0 for LGD. They get themselves the kill. Not maybe the highest value kill, but a kill nonetheless as soon as sit level 6 comes online, which I guess is Alina. That's what you want to be doing. Just using that all every time it's out so you can get yourself that, that pretty much guaranteed kill. And top lane. DDC just wrapping around a bit. If he can look for some body blocks, then they might be able to get this. The cooldown that should latch. And can they close this gap? So I was trying to move in. It looks like he can't quite get close enough, so MSS is going to be safe enough this time. But we're already seeing how hard it is for this clock to just stay in lane against just the duo at the moment, at the at the AA and the Jara. Yeah, it's it's very, very difficult. At, the, at this point, I'm wondering if MSS should just go somewhere else. Or, I'm, I'm still surprised he hasn't skilled Rocket. He's holding his third skill point and just losing easy CS. Now, finally, he does skill it. And it's off! Unfortunately for him, Gyro already has more damage than the Rocket does by now <laughs> on his odd attacks. But it's still possible he can grab some CS here and there. 
The good news for Cloud9 is how much Ritsu's got in the Yes, place. he's so getting a lot. They've prioritized him a lot with the Dazzle stacking for him, protecting him pretty much the entire game so far, so they're, they're investing a lot into their Shadow Fiend. And I don't think it's the wrong choice, because there's no good alternative here. I don't think ganking potential is something these two supports will... They won't really have an easy time getting away with that. Uh, and the Razor is doing just fine on his in the bottom lane against pretty much no opposition from the Shaker. Yeah, and I guess in terms of kind of itemization here for the side, are we going to see the classic kind of SF going for the mech and then Razor just simply stack it, starting to stack up and get the S and Y online as soon as possible for Brax? I think I'd rather do it the other way around. I oh, think really? Razor's okay. the better mech, mech carrier, Shadow Fiend is the better scaling carry. All right. Um, both of them benefit from either build, but the thing is, Shadow Fiend just farms a lot faster. So if he needs to go for a more defensive item such as the mech, you slow down his ramp up. Force Razor can easily play that utility role instead, and Shadowfin can get really, really big. And look at this. So eight minutes in, they're bringing Jara on a tour around the map. They're going to be able to find Savage here. The shards come out, the snowball to follow through, and well, with the fish and everything else, one four three seven doesn't get the chance to get the grave out, and that'll be the third pick off there for LGD. And, and that's the kind of aggressive plays that it's always great to see when there's a gyrocopter, rather than just being passive, sticking in lane, just getting himself involved in the nitty gritty across the map. This is going to give MSS some space, though, on the clockwork. So he's getting a one-on-one -on -one matchup now against DDC, but DDC is one and a half levels ahead. Oh, MSS trying to threaten him a little bit, but DDC seems to not be too phased by this. Maybe that's an opening with Savage smoking in, but I think this is a really dangerous game if yeah. they try it. I mean, you've got already it takes long. RTK coming around. You can see why they're trying to do it. They, they, they know that the A has been left on his own so he can get that level 6, get the solo XP. But Savage now is going to find RTK. MSS is going to move forward. He's got two points here in the battery assault with the brain step as well. But oh, he's trying to, trying to get. He's not going to be able to do it with the battery assault there. There is a snowball. Can they try and turn? Can they kill this clock before it kills the Shaker? No. Shaker's going to go down. MSS, does he live through this one? No, he doesn't. So it's a 1 for 1 at the moment. But it looks like LGD may be able to make this a 2 for 1 unless he gets the denied from the creeps. No, he doesn't. And they'll be able to find that kill there as well as DDC picks that up on the AA. So a uh, two-for-one trade there for LGD. And well, as you were saying, Sin, not really the best movement there from Cloud9 on the top. It's just a difficult kill because it takes so long for Bane and Clock to get to kill any of these heroes up here when they're both only level 4. If this was a level 6 Clockwork, it's a different story. Then they have so much burst that they could have killed Shaker before any reinforcements arrived. Uh, but it's, it's very easy for LGD to turn that around on them and get two kills in return. So, another victory for LGD. They're also, at the same time, pushing this bottom lane. And they can just feel so safe because what's the real threat from Cloud9 right now? They can't initiate on them until Clockwork is level 6. And this is, of course, it. Jara just feels so safe at the moment. He knows that he can be down here. He's got backup and maybe around as well. And that Lacuna Blade is back online. So they have got that kill potentially if anyone from the side of Cloud9 tries to come in. Cloud9 themselves, they're looking for a bit of a push up top. We've got Ritsu and Brax joining forces. Link with the tower. A nice ice blast. We'll connect onto two. Now the Fisher as well. It catches Ritsu. And with this TP in from Sila, I don't think Ritsu gets himself out of this one. And there's no way he's retreating from that. 35 seconds on the clock here. The SF and a nice ice blast into a nice reactive play there from the side of LGD. They're crushing this game right now. Killing the Shadow Fiend is the biggest deal. Like usually, when a Shadow Fiend has 100 CS minute 11, his team is leading. They're 3,000 gold behind. Uh, with his death and with the lost tower bot, LGD are starting to gain map control. They're making all the right plays and the right calls. And I, I gotta say, part of it to me is down to the draft, where Cloud9 just has a lineup that it's difficult to see playing aggressively. So LGD are just exploiting it, going pretty much wherever they want with their heroes right now. Well, they might get a kill here though. There are four heroes coming in on the side. There's, an, there's gonna be an ice blast. They'll find the light strike, but there's no follow-up. So they do lose Lena, maybe in a in a very deep position on his own in the jungle there, and he does get punished for it by Cloud9. So yeah, uh, get the pick off. It's very important for them. This is almost level six on clockwork. Yeah. I've talked about it a lot, but it's just very clear with their strategy that this is very important uh, for their lineup to be able to uh, to play a mid game at all. I still think they are pretty far behind in the game. Even if the gold was zero, I would say they're behind just from a strategic point of view. But it opens up some avenues of uh, of comeback here. And in terms of builds, it's looking to be what you suggested. The fact that Sanj has now been picked up by Ritz on the SF, so almost certainly looking for that Ed and White. And then uh, Razor himself, 
yet to pick anything else up on top of the treads and the Aquila, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we see the mech or, or uh, do you definitely buy the mech on the Razor? Is there any reason why you would avoid it against LGD's lineup? You should be like, you can be scared of AA uh, <laughs> disabling your mech, but at the same time, you kind of have to try to play around it. And Yes, AA is a counter to mech, but you could also say the other way around. If you survive the ice blast yes. and it brings you low, that's how you turn and win a fight. So Ooh. I wouldn't say he should get uh, savages. Yeah, getting he's savaged. in a lot of trouble. Oh, oh nice, nice nightmare. nightmare. <laughs> he dodges a I said bit. it first. <laughs> <laughs> he died anyway. got you. Yeah. All right, and that's the 12-minute minus now on DDC's AA. So not bad at all for the man. They're yeah, trying to really take the timing. So, I, as you were saying earlier, it's just about, so C9, they're investing a lot in Ritsu's Shadow Fiend, and he's got to do a lot for the team. He is still top uh, net worth at the moment in the game, so they've got to do, use this as much as they can. He's level 11, he's doing a lot, but it's when these fights kind of kick off, and we've seen LGD pretty much using smokes consistently every time they're available, and finding the pickoffs. And this time Cloud9 themselves, they're going to try, try their own luck at the smokes, and, and start to make a movement towards the top lane. There's three heroes at the moment putting pressure on that tier one from LGD. So we'll see if Cloud9 can get the wrap around here. Now they're going to go back towards mid with the hook shot straight onto Scylla. Scylla's going to try and turn though, but the Fiend's grip is there. They'll take down the Gyrocopter. Shallow Grave will keep the clockwork alive, but they've still got RTK there hanging around with MMY and they'll get the kill. Red Queen comes out for Ritsu. It's a beautiful one from the sidelines. Two dead at the moment. Light Strike will clip Ritsu, but Brax moving forward with the rest of Cloud9. They're looking for more. They should be able to find MMY here and they will. A three for one trade there from Cloud9. And as you said, just having that hookshot initiation, following it up with a beautiful Requiem from the side, and the fact that you've got the full team there, and LGD just weren't ready for that. I was still focused on pushing on the top lane, and it's a lovely fight for Cloud9. Yeah, they needed this very, very much. If they get the tower too, we're almost back to a zero gold oh. lead, I think. AA versus but... Bane. He's, he's going to stick around for some. Okay, now. Yeah, the smart TP out. And, he, and he's gone, so. Cloud9 didn't manage to take the tower though. They got it very low. I'm curious to see if LGD decide to deny it or just leave it there for as a strategic position for Town Portal. I would probably die here. It's very clear Cloud9 are going to double raise the wave and just hit it twice with SF. Or they should make a very good bait there. Uh, that is pretty difficult to do. And it's like, yeah, RTSK is yeah, just going to take it down here. The Shaker. And maybe he's Linus at the moment. He's level 11. But yours. And it looks like, so perhaps he's picked up the Asher, so maybe, you know, foregoing the mech build and deciding to get the SMY online. And here's your hook shot again. On to maybe. And maybe he's in a lot of trouble here. Caught in the cogs. Another pick off. But the Cornell's coming through here. And look, this is Scylla just moving in on the front lines, trying to go. The Ice Blast was with. And Brax he gets off the static link. There'll be a snowball closing on his MSS. The Shallow Grove keeping Brax alive here, but he may need to get himself out. Fiend's Crypt has been put down onto ROTK. Can they kill him? Oh, nearly. He's still alive. ROTK's going to survive. They couldn't quite finish off the Shaker. And that was a really nice fissure. It caught Razor on the left hand side as well. <laughs> So he did get himself a kill too. That looked really bad for LGD when that AA ult whiffed completely, like you said. They still had enough. They just had a way superior position, and the they, Shadow Fiend yeah. just wasn't there. He wasn't there, and he had a DD as well. It could have been the turnaround potential, but maybe Ritzy just felt that it already just wasn't the fight that the C9 wanted to commit to. And so he just focuses on pushing up on top lane. Right? I think if he had his TP ready, it was flat out just a mistake not porting down there. Okay. He could have secured his team the fight. And even if they don't get kills, they don't lose three heroes. Then LGD have to, at the very least, just retreat and be like, oh, Shadow Fiend is porting and get back. And in that case, you kill the Lina and maybe you lose your clock and then that's it. He accomplished top lane worth was not worth two lives. And that's on white now, Dern on to Scylla. So adding to this potential that he has when he fights 16 minutes into the game. And, uh, I mean, at, at this point, so yeah, we talked about earlier just talking it late, uh, go, go taking it late. Have Cloud9 got as much potential in the late game, do you feel, as LGD's lineup? No. No. I don't think so. I, there's, like, this sweet spot for their lineup where Shetfiend and Razor are both strong. And I would say it's coming up within the next 10 minutes. Uh, but the, the real issue I have with Cloud9's ability to win this game is even if they're in a good position and even if they're leading they need to breach high ground at some point and it's just super difficult to do against LGD's lineup and they have worse late game uh, when we go very very late gyro and uh, of course the Lina should be able to to deal with these two cores for Cloud9 
Okay. In most cases, I will say. Okay, I'm not oh, this is a very Ooh, good ice blast. Up to three, the fish and the snowball in as well. They're ready to fire out. GD, there's a shallow grab. Richard will get off the Requiem. They'll burst down the touch, but they've already lost the pain. And now maybe turning up from the sidelines. Hookshot across from SS. It's two for one at the moment. It looks like it's going to be two for two if they can kill. Maybe another no, can't. Slam from ROTK will finish off the ban in the pit. And it's a double kill for maybe as LGD clean up. It was off the beautiful setup of that ice blast into the fissure, into the snowball, bringing them so low. Those ice shards. Making it so hard to fight. The ice shards were incredible. He caught three heroes inside the shard, so Cloud9 couldn't actually exit the pit. Makes for a very easy set. Oh, baby! He, he cancelled the TP. I don't think he realized. <laughs> oh. He probably thought he missed. That was literally on the last 0.1 second. I mean, that's after that fight anyway, so RT can going to have his blink dagger now. You know what I mean? Blink dagger now done. Mm -hmm. And blink dagger on the Lena as well. They're ready the to one go. on Shaker is the yeah. big deal here. Um, as I mentioned earlier, as far as the draft goes, there's just so many ways for LGD to take fights. And... Preventing Cloud9 from taking Roshan, which I think is the biggest threat right now to, again, them being able to push the high ground. Having the Aegis will make a very big difference. Of course, that's one thing LGD does not deal with so well, is in order for them to get key kills, they probably have to commit ultimates. And yes. if they do that onto Shadowfiend with Aegis, maybe they lose a tier 3, and then you can look towards secondary Roshans giving racks. But they held it. Just keep the farm going, and building a, a significant advantage again here at 5k apiece. Yeah, keeping the swing favoring themselves. Chris is going to try and work on that BKB. And, of course, against LG's lineup, BKB is going to be very nice in these fights. Yeah. And we've already seen what a, what a well-time Requiem can do against this lineup of LGD. And LGD themselves, is the Jara going to be building a BKB? Yeah, he looks like he himself. He's opted for the BKB as well. Straight out to the S and Y. So really, really preparing for these fights that both teams are forcing at this point of the game, 19 minutes in. We've seen a lot of aggression from both sides, but at the moment, the majority of it has favoured the side of LGD. And, uh, I mean, LGD themselves, the Tusk with the Arcanes, what, what does he follow this build with? Does he himself look for the mech for the lineup of LGD? Is that something that you can still go for at this point of the game, to, to then build into the Greaves for these fights? Yeah, I think that would be nice. I think Greaves are good. Um, there's no... If you look at Cloud9's lineup, their damage is mainly spread damage between Requiem, Raises, and Plasma Field right now, and being able to negate at least one of those spells where the mech is very, very nice. Alternatively, he can get a Blink Dagger, just so he has a very easy way of getting in on the Bane. If he has already used the Snowball, uh, he can then Blink Punch the Bane instead to stop Grip. It's also nice. Or he can Blink into Cogs and save his ally that yeah. gets caught in yeah. there as well. So the, there's a lot of utility in getting a Blink Dagger here. Um, I would say either build is actually very good. Uh, talking about the blinks, we're going to see ROTK want to try and use his hair off the back of this smoke. Smoker, make the movement over to the Radiant side of the map. See if they're able to find anyone. You've got both the Razor and the Bane pushing in the top lane, soon to be joined by MSS. And so they're just going to wrap around between the towers and head into the jungle. At the moment, Ritsu is there, along with the backup of 1437 on the Dazzle. We'll see if they can get themselves deep enough to find it. Uh, it looks like they're going to give up on this one and just realize that they've got the space to get the push on mid. They'll look to try to take the tier 1 here in it. And C9 won't be doing anything in response to that. And this is a, such a classic LGD play as well. Smoking to get tower. I think they were hoping to get a pick. Mm -hmm. But what happens in the game is when you show up out of nowhere and you're suddenly five heroes at a tower and attacking it, if the enemy team has their heroes spread out across the map, getting back to defend the tower is either going to cost them their entire push on the other lanes and two or three TPs, or you just the delay on TPing is so long that you might even be late anyway. So this whole surprise factor of LGD going off the map and getting a tower I think is very good. Ritsu will now have that BKB pretty much done. Just uh, a few up away from having the recipe for it. And that's going to be ready for this SF for the next fight. JLGD might look for themselves that they're pushing down the bottom lane. Sila leading the way, backed up by maybe an MMY. But Cloud9, they know it, and Cloud9 themselves might look to try and take the fight here. Weave's going to get dropped, but it actually doesn't. Oh, it only catches the jar on the edge there. They'll be the all set up onto the Bane with the Lena combo. They'll take down Savage. At the same time, MMY trying to move forward onto 1437. Looks like Cloud9 will just try and get themselves out of this here. Maybe he's going to chase it. There's the Fisher from RTK, setting up the kill onto the Dazzle. The second pick off in a row there for LGD. They'll blink forward. They're looking for more. The Light Strike. It catches MSS. They get the right clicks in. 
in. And it always gets the hooks up, but it doesn't latch onto anything. MSS, he tried to get himself out. I think he tried to hook onto Ritsu, but Ritsu moved out of the way. And that's going to be the tier 2 potentially going down as well, as LGD find three very nice pickoffs at the bottom. And they just have AA farming top at the same time, just only providing the Ice Blast there, which actually missed. He didn't even need to be there. LG just again catch them by surprise and... Oh, ROTK, look at these setups. But the Fisher, oh my goodness, this man's a player and so is his team. Brax is down in the mid lane. Oh. At least one return kill here from Ritsu, and up top gets DDC. You know, you know the game is uh, is looking rough when the enemy's AA is worth 600 gold, minute 23 uh, for Ritsu. It's pretty interesting because you can start if you're whether you're the losing or winning team. This can try to this can give you an idea of what the current status of gold uh, gold lead is oh, in the game. Maybe is he got Laguna? He has. He has got Laguna, and he's going to use it. There we go. No, okay, yeah, we'll use it to make sure. We'll use it to make sure. He says. Another kill here for the lineup, and a lot of a lot of hope really being invested in Ritsu on his SF at this point. Because LGD themselves, they just got the whole net worth set much more evenly between their cores. And the Jar and Lina are getting scarier and scarier at this point. And we've just seen how confident LGD are with these movements across the map. Uh, I don't think we've seen them do a single field smoke or rotation at this point. And now they're going to look for more. He drops the core down here, Salah. He's going to clear 1437. So he won't try to commit to it. But I mean, against this kind of play that LGD are, are bringing to this match, what, what do you do if you're Cloud9 to react to it? I, don't know, I personally, I, once again, I feel like they missed their timing window already. Um, with this kind of draft, they might have wanted to invest more into securing clockwork in early game. So Bane should have maybe played more around the top lane, uh, or the Dazzle should have to uh, allow Clock to get a game. Because well, you saw when MSS got level six, they started showing signs of life, but it just happened so late into the game, and LGG just had all the solutions. They're also seemingly reading the map a bit better. Do Cloud9 have smokes? I feel like they... Have they even used They've got one? a smoke on 1437 at the moment. They yeah. have one on 1437. Is that the only one they have left? Because I haven't really felt the impact of the smokes they have done uh, compared to LGDs, which have been way more successful. And at this point, you you got to start looking for places Cloud9. I don't think farming is going to work. Okay, I mean, they are grouping up here at the moment towards their own Ancients. The question is, are they going to go... Or some kind of smoke on movement. They've got that Radiant Ward that's showing them the fact that AA is on his own. They might just look for the easy pick off here. As they're going to commit a few heroes. And there's your hook shot for it. So they'll see DDC is on his own. They're going for the kill. And they will get it. So again, taking down the A. But this is just giving the space for uh, LGD to just make movements around the map elsewhere. And here we go. Snowball straight onto 1437. He gets the punch through. There'll be a cooldown as well. He's going to look for the TP out. Is the missile going to connect? It doesn't even matter because the fish is there from ROTK. 1437 will go down. That's essentially a support for support trade there between the sides. LGD more so in a position to get the push on in the mid lane. Maybe try and look for the tier 2 and even look to try and, try and provoke another fight from the side of Cloud9. Yeah, they are indeed in a very good spot here to uh, to pressure this, but at the same time showing some respect to the enemy team. Of course, uh, maybe nervous about the clockwork. They shouldn't be. It doesn't have hookshot for another 30. Uh, but sometimes in these situations, it's difficult to assess when it's going to be ready. And they also know that as long as they're map controlling and farming, they're going to be fine. Maybe he's now got his Aghanims. It's looking very, very strong on that Lina. They've got about 10,000 gold advantage, wondering when they're going to start trying for this Roshan pick. Yeah, this is, um, yeah, I just, yeah, maybe. 25 minutes in having, as you said, the Aghanims and the Yules and the Blink Dagger. That's uh, pretty impressive for the man. Especially in a game as well where the Gyros had so much farm. They're both just about 1k behind the SF, but this is an SF that's had a lot of stacks created for him, a lot of space created for him by the side of Cloud9. So it just really goes to show how our LGD are kind of making the best, uh, best uh, of this situation in comparison to Cloud9. It looks like it's going to be the Scardi coming out next for Ritsu as he picks up the first ultimate orb. Uh, unless, I mean, I imagine it's going to be Scardi. He can't really afford to go too defensive and get something like a Lincoln's canny against this lineup. He might have to against the the, blade. the Laguna Blade. Yeah. Um, it is possible. I just, okay. My concern for Cloud9 is who's going to deal the damage? Like, yeah, that's they, what I was thinking if he goes Lincoln's. They need to yeah. kill someone. Well, even Scotty doesn't give very much damage for you, the money you pay. Mm -hmm. um, it's more of a like hybrid item that gives a little bit of everything, or a lot of everything, but... Yeah, it's the Luigi of those two items. Yeah. yeah. But doesn't... I don't know. 
I don't. I don't think right now that they can. They can kill the the big heroes of LGD with anything short of a full team script or having a very good weave beforehand. Hookshot. MSS closing the gap, trying to move on to maybe, but LGD are going to be there for reaction. Look at this as well, moving in from the bottom. There's the wraparound RTK straight with the Fisher. Now he blinks forward, looking for more. The slam straight onto the Razor, looking to get him down here with the charge and maybe turns up with the Laguna onto Praxis enough with the right click. The Dragon Slave's going to miss. Snowball across will finish off MSS on the clock. Brax trying to get himself away, but the shards are there. They'll catch him just on the clip, and that'll just buy the time for the rest of LGD to move in and find themselves the second pick off there. The Cloud9 desperately trying to find something up top, but LGD are there with the full five-man reaction rotation. And again, the issue here is just that, well, first of all, the hookshot doesn't connect. And at that point, kill is just not happening anymore. But Razor Clock right now is also not that dangerous of a duo for, uh, for LGD to be ganked by. They have the time to respond. Uh, with their other heroes supporting up there. I, mean, I think as well, you, you talked about it earlier, how a shaker can do so much more with a, a bad start than a clock can, and I think that's shown in the net worth as well. And we're seeing the clock, MSS, poor Bla lad bless him, he's, he's a, a fair bit behind just the supports of LGD in terms of value. Hey, you also just look at kill attendance. Yeah. Shaker's been in 17 kills, yeah. Clockwork has been in 6. I mean, relative to his team's number of kills, it's pretty good, but... It's just been way more going the way of ROTK in this game. Yeah, he's been making a lot up in ROTK. There's been some really nice plays from him. Yeah, 23 to 9, 28 minutes in. Ritsu is still sitting at the top of that net worth, but it's really just a case of what he's going to be able to do with it, and, and of course to see what he does build here with this orb. And DDC, how's he doing on the Agonist front? Is he j okay, so he's only got the staff. There's nothing on the Courier, is there? No. Okay, so because of the tech, he's been killed a fair few times up here whilst he's trying to be building these components. I will, of course, have that Agonist eventually. Okay, and there we go. Might he did, but he, DDC did buy the gem there for us. Cheers, weapons. I think he might also be buying a four staff over uh, eggs in this game. When, when you open up with the staff of wizardry, it generally hints that either you haven't chosen yet, okay, or you're going for the four staff. And you're at, well, I mean, do you still get the miners first if you're going four staff, or I guess it, he, he might have just changed timings. his mind. This is yeah. like, oh wow, I got a 13 minute yeah. Midas, that's he great. And well. since then, he died a couple times, didn't find uh, as much farm as he had hoped, maybe. Then you adjust your build to the situation. Four staff counters clock more than any other item in the game. Yeah, and, and it's great against the static link as well, just getting yep, the jar away absolutely. from it. So it's also good against Fiend Script, yeah. actually. When the hero is just turned in the right direction, creating that extra gap for the enemy team to reach the target of grip is very useful. It's true, it's true. And uh, Roshan looks like this may be what's next on the menu. Maybe finds himself a DD rune, and it looks like this will be go time here for the team. Silo and the, booze, uh, the boys moving in. And uh, let's see if Cloud9 can do anything. I'm going to smoke up for this. I mean, this is potentially a high-risk, high-reward play from the side. Let's see if they can do anything here. The Flare will scout it out. They'll move forward. And here's Brax trying to go. The Echo Sound comes through. Brax does get off the BKB in time. But the, oh, the Ice Blast straight onto Ritz. He'll finally get the BKB out. And the Punch is going to bring him low, but not quite low enough. He's going to be fine. Shallow Graved up. They've already taken down the Lina. They'll take down the Tusk and the Jar as well. Really nice fight there for Cloud9. They also managed to snatch the Aegis as MSS picks that up. Cloud9, as I said, it was a high-risk, high-reward, and they certainly hit the jackpot with that one. A massive gold swing, massive XP swing as well, and LGD just weren't prepared for that. I, I'm getting the Aegis as well, Sin, off the back of that trade. Couldn't have gone any better for Cloud9. No, it's really, really crucial for them that they managed to shut out the Lina from that fight, not getting the Laguna Blade off. Brax, I think, got a full drain off on the Gyro. That's That was a very dangerous play from LGD. I thought that was going to go better for them, well, and they probably did themselves, but Cloud9 with a very good initiation, they found the angle with the right heroes that they needed. And shutting down the lean in the fight, I think, is the absolute most important thing. Don't let maybe move around in the fights. And they didn't. Okay, and that's just Guardi now done for Ritsu. Off the back of that, four stuff picked up by Clot. So a bit of momentum regained there by the side of Cloud9. We'll see now if they're able to do anything. I mean, I guess still in the position that they are, they probably won't look to play too aggressive. And of course, the Aegis was popped in the fight as well, even though they did manage to steal it. But they're still going to be very aware of the power of LGD. But they're certainly closing the gap between their own and the opponent's. I guess it's just a question now of, of how this this Razor and this Shadow Fiend do proceed after kind of tanking up. So as you said, the Scardi. It's kind of a bit of a jack of all trades. At this point, does he just need to go for the full out damage here on, on Ritsu? 
Yeah, I think so. I don't. I don't know if Butterfly is actually a good choice here because you know Jaro will be getting an MKB eventually, pretty much no matter what in his build. Um, there's still a lot of spell damage coming out from the Lina that it doesn't really counter very well, and you you do have the health from the Scotty to back that up. So now you can go for a really hard hitting damage item like a Daedalus. Uh, your move speed from Sanjin Yasha is probably enough for you to be able to lock onto targets. That would probably be my choice in this case for him. Is uh, is definitely Daedalus. Okay, then. Well, it's all about choices. Yeah, the money really is racking up here on the Gyrocopter. He's got 3k to work with, Scyther. So we'll see what he opts to invest in. There's a DD rune down the bottom. So let's uh, see who decides to go and pick that up. And C9's so nice keeping themselves a little bit more grouped up now. We've got all four, five of them just operating in their own jungle. Ready for LGD if they do try and look for something sneaky in the Scyla. This is... He's on his own here. If they spot him, and he's going to be... I mean, the flare was there. If MS has found a hook shot, could have been in a bit of trouble. I mean, that was some some ballsy positioning there from the gyrocopter. Just casually wandering into the Radiant Jungle on his own. Yeah, his team was pretty far behind him. DDC is going to opt for the... Okay. Agonimus, by the way. Yeah. He grabbed the point booster now. So, decides the four staff is not necessary. They do, of course, have one on the shaker. Maybe this is the maybe Silo came out on his own and he was like, "Hey, look at me, I'm all on my own." And Clan, I'm like, "Hey, he's all on his own." Now he's come back, but he's got the team smoked up, so they might try and go on in here. But okay, the smoke's going to be revealed because Brackets have moved forward. Oh, they're pinging. Up. Maybe they know because the smoke yeah, broke that there yeah. has to be someone there. But no initiation coming in from the Clockwork Tower gets denied. It's all right for Cloud9. They progress a little bit on the map. And if they fell for that, that was like the most obvious bait. Yes, I feel like yeah. there, there's no it's one on the other map. lanes. Sila. Standing alone at the tier two, tier one tower, rather at minute 34, is a pretty clear sign that there is backup available, and they just get the tower and get out. And I certainly feel at this point, with, with the value and, and what Ritsu has got, he is pretty hard to kill. You know, if you are LGD going into these fights, and as you already talked about, just getting an Enfeeble or a Stalin onto Gyrocopter. I don't know if you're killing the Shadow Fiend through the BKB, and the fact that he's got the Dazzle backing him up as well. These high ground advances, when they do come out, are going to be fairly scary. Yes, LGD have got the tools to deal with it. They've now got a Shiva's Guard picked up by the Lena. But Cloud9 certainly have a fair bit of a punch to them. And we'll just see uh, if they will do anything with it. Yeah, 2.6k now on your Shadow Fiend. So, almost certainly we'll look to sell the Aquila and pick up to add to the right click and it's going to be the butterfly potentially coming out first with the gyros he's picked up the eagle song i mean do you see that eagle song and then you just say okay i'll just get the mkb first here on, on ritsu's sf now mm. or is the evasion now even more valuable knowing that the gyro is not gonna have an mkb soon oh the thing is it's like the mkb yeah. is obviously great against gyro but the daedalus is so much better against all the others okay and I don't know if he needs to take on the responsibility of shutting down the gyro, because I feel like that's actually the responsibility of Bane and, and the Razor. And Ritsu needs to be able to shut down the others very very quickly and very easily. Of course, the MKB does give him the... allow him to kill the gyro a lot easier. Uh, I'm okay with both. I think, for me, this is one of those games where you don't get the MKB first, actually. Okay. Even, even with it on the horizon. What's he got coming out in the curry here, the SF? He's just had something sent out to him. Okay, so it's not really giving away too much. It could still be that Daedalus. But he has picked up the Demon Edge, so... Definitely one of the two, not opting for the Butterfly himself this game first. I do think he's going to go in KB, though. It's okay. just the standard response is when you see a, um, a Butterfly build-up from the enemy team's carry, you generally prioritize MKB over Daedalus, and I would agree with it in the vast majority of cases. But this one, I feel like it's a little bit borderline. Both are good. There it is, by the way. Yeah, Butterfly done. Wow. No buyback for Siler. This is actually an opening for Cloud9 if they win this fight to get Rax. But I don't think they want his pipe. Yeah, they did all come up for his five, but not quite feeling confident enough to try and fight under the tier two of LGD. Or maybe they're still hanging around. Yeah, it looks like the call is to back off. They want to be very careful about the next fight that they take. Razor, of course, is working towards that assault crass and, and is fairly close as well. So ideally, maybe just wanting to hang on until Brax has picked that item up and then trying to go for some more action. Because AC in a nicely placed weave from 1437 is is going to make it very hard for you to try and fight in, into that lineup. Especially yeah, with regards to BKBs, of course, on both of the cores for Cloud9. And uh, what's Ritsu got 
coming out here. He's just sending it back. Is he going to invest in the first javelin? Or no, he's just getting a TP out at the moment. Hasn't quite got the money to finish off the full MKB. And LGD, and they're grouping up there. Not going to smoke for the time being. So a little bit more of a passive section of this game here, where I think LGD kind of realized that Cloud9, they do have that potential to still take these fights, and, and they themselves, they can't just afford to go willy-nilly walking around the map smoked up, because they're, they're not always going to come out on top, yeah, unless if, they're super careful about their fights. If the Roche fight didn't go the way it did, I think LGD would have almost ended the game by now. But they lost a lot of, a lot of their progress in the game, basically, with that one play. Losing the Aegis, losing the Roshan, they lost like a 5,000 gold advantage, basically. Whereas, had they got the Roche, they would have had 15k. Oh, here we go. Yeah, Prax. Well, he's going to be all on his own here, but he's popped the BKB. He gets a decent static link off as well. He could try to move in off the back of this, closing the gap. MMY will be able to blink away, but a nice return from MSS catches out in the AA. Yeah, yeah. That'll be one, but here's Tyler trying to turn with the cooldown onto two. It's Echo Slam from RTK. Did catch MSS, and they'll take down the clockwork. One for one at the moment. Who's going to continue this fight? Like Ritz is the one wanting to. BKB'd up, moving straight forward to the side of LGD with this aggression. Maybe we'll get the blink off Ritsu. Look at the Requiem. We'll get MMY with it. So that'll be two for one at the moment. Favoring the side of Cloud9, but now LGD is maybe trying to come back in. They're throwing the missile down onto Ritsu. The Fisher from the RTK catches three, moves himself forward, gets the enchant totem off. But now there's a Fiend script from the sidelines. RTK is coming too deep, and they're going to punish that. A C9 finding three kills there off the side of LGD. As I don't quite know if that was the play there from the Sin going back in against Cloud9 when they'd already lost two heroes. Yeah, they kind of, they might have felt like it got stolen away from them because they thought they had a shot at the Razor. But with that BKB, they're not killing him unless Lina is in position to commit Laguna together with Gyro's physical, and they didn't. So, uh, good hookshot, like you said, from MSS, isolating key target and killing it off. And Cloud9 are actually starting to pull this game back pretty well. Yeah, and this is the momentum they need. If they, they can ride off this. I mean, one thing, did the Shaker finish it off now? He lost a bit of the gold. He was looking to build into a Lotus Orb. I believe he's got everything bar the, the plate mail on the courier. Uh, which is obviously going to be very nice for the Gyrocopter. If he can land that down on the Gyrocopter before these fights start, start, suddenly the Static Link is irrelevant. Bane's going to have a lot harder trouble controlling the Gyrocopter with the Fiend's Grips, with the Nightmares. Uh, so it's going to be a, a very nice pickup there for LGD when they do get it. But yeah, as you said, Cloud9 suddenly getting their strength and their act back together. And LGD, I mean, that's pretty much the second fight that we've seen in a row where LGD just haven't come out on top. Got to be a little bit wor worried about Cloud9 now at this point. If they want to come out on top in these kind of fights, they need to. The engage needs to be way more crisp. They basically got their tusk and their AA out of position, going on a hero that has a BKB, and Zelina wasn't able to blow up the razor whatsoever. If they engage with snowball like they did there, it's piece of cake for Brax to just use BKB defensively as the snowball approaches and just turn on his ultimate. And LGD just had to turn tail and run. And they could have actually managed to disengage entirely if it wasn't for MSS. Yes, yeah, they were. Yeah, he did catch them on the back. And now Cloud Nine, All right. for smoke from the from the base. But a fair way to travel. It. I mean, is this potentially just smoke and go rush, or is this smoke look for pickoffs and then go rush? And rush itself uh, is back up. There are a lot of ways that LGD can scout this rush, but if they get away with it, it's yeah. a very big play that could open up. Oh, here comes the creep. That's going to be the way they play for them. So Clown, then they're not going to go straight for the pit. They're going to look for try and find a fight first, and they might just get it here. Moving up to the high ground, the rocket flare will spot them out. They know that LGD is about in the neighborhood. And there's your hook shot from MSS, beautifully on target. Maybe will use himself by himself sometime. But Ritsu looking for the channel of the Requiem. The snowball's going to save two of them though. Salah will still get caught with the slow Brax trying to move forward with the BKB. Fisher gets thrown back, and the missile will land onto the clockwork. And see if LGD move in onto this one. MSS could be in trouble. The cooldown's there, and they will. They'll take down the clockwork. There's your Lotus Orb onto Silas, stopping any chance of Cloud9 turning this one back onto the Maritsu. He's caught on the cliff. He's all alone. He's down. Double kill for Sila. Maybe even a triple as they close in onto SVG. They'll get a triple kill for the Gyrocopter. And LGD might even find more. They'll look for the TPR 1437. It's not going to happen. Ultra kill for Sila. And this time, Cloud9 Smoke getting punished in the most painful way possible as they lose four heroes. They'll lose the Roshan to LGD. And LGD say, well, you may have had a couple of nice fights, but we can have an even nicer one. The way that fight developed was actually really interesting, because I was like, they broke the smoke. And that's where most players will just immediately react by blinking out their Lina. He stayed in the front lines, kept his blink ready, and actually let them engage on him. It was like the call was... Okay, if he wants to hookshot me, that's fine. I'm going to Yules, then you can defensive snowball me, and then I can blink. 
And it went probably better than what LGD expected because Ritsu wasted BKB Requiem on hitting almost nothing. And that's such a big part of their team fight out the window where LGD just buy time with the snowball that it was an easy fight afterwards. Yeah, I mean, Tusk, as we we're saying, it's just one of those heroes. He's got a lot of strengths against a lot of them, but, I mean, SF is another one. Just using the snowball to dodge the Requiem, saving his team, getting himself in there sometimes as well with a punch to cancel the channeling. And off the back of that, LGD now looking to push down the mid lane. SF's going to be back up in a few seconds, and looks like LGD will respect that, maybe just try and get the top lane pushed in, get that final tier 2 away from the side of Cloud9. But LGD certainly regaining the control that they did have for pretty much the first 25 minutes of this game back into their hands. Yeah. You can just tell from the graph how this game has gone. LGD have been doing very well all the time. There was the one big turnaround yes. for Cloud9. Game stagnated a bit, and now they pulled it back once again after another good team fight from Cloud9. It's interesting to see how they show these signs of life in a couple of very good fights. But apart from them, very little happening from Cloud9's side. So now they return to farming. Curious to see what Brex gets next. And he's got a bit of gold saved up, hasn't he? Was he on the moment? 3.5k, yeah, on this Razor. I mean, does he... Axe? Does he go for the Axe, yeah? So they can try and break high ground a little easier? This he's got built. the AC. I mean, it's... I like the idea of getting a Butterfly just so you can okay. flutter and stay next to Gyrocopter and steal damage. Of course, the MKB will be coming out for Salar as his next item. As it looks, so maybe not interested in using the f or in getting the butterfly for that reason. Mm -hmm. uh, he does have pretty good move speed already. 455 is pretty high, so it should be higher. Well, Salar can actually outrun him if he uses Flutter. Then he's on 522. We'll see. Another nice item on Razor in this game is actually either Shivas or Hex. Um, he does have pretty good damage over the course of a long fight with Eye of the Storm running and of course stealing the damage with Static Link. He has enough attack speed between Sanjin Yashi and Kira, so it's all about locking on his target. And the minus attack speed aura against Gyrocopter is great, and of course the additional armor. And the alternative hex would just be simply for them to have a secondary means of engaging and, and controlling heroes. Um, this is... Potentially nice from LGD. They had that die awards. They saw the fact that Cloud9 came very deep out on this top lane. And they're going to try and smoke and catch him off the bat. Might be MSS the one to tank this one. As LGD moving in. MSS. Okay. No, he's in a lot of trouble. There's the punch into the cooldown. Trapped in his own cogs. MSS will go down. So they take down the clockwork. Everyone else from the side of Cloud9 will be able to get themselves out and away. That was the lowest level here on the map, though. Yeah, so he, he's tanking it for them. He's going to respawn so fast that it actually won't really matter. And the fact that LGD blew the smoke on them, they're probably not very satisfied with. They can try to go high ground here with 30 seconds on the clock, but the creep wave is still a good 20 seconds away from the base. So, Cloud9 can hold it with just a glyph. If they want to really delay it for a 5 on 5, or maybe LGD aren't even trying to commit Look with the wave. how much money this lean has got. It's got quite a bit since. Yep. 7k gold on maybe. I'm surprised he doesn't sell his Yules at this point and get something else, even with the a pick up a hex. Aegis in his inventory, yeah. That's a lot of money on this man. Hex would be great. I, I think this is actually also a pretty good time for him to uh, get a Refresher. I wouldn't mind seeing Refresher BKB as two last items, actually, just so he can refresh the Shivas, um, double Laguna, key targets. And with the BKB, he should be able to just sustain sustain against the the clockwork and all the magic damage coming out from Cloud9. There we go, and moving forward, blink forward, punch onto Ritsu, pops the BKB and it looks to try and turn his Silo's got the lower sword upon him, and he moves forward himself with the BKB, the damage from Ritsu is too much, Silo's gonna get taken down here. C9 looking pretty strong, they can maybe move in for more. If they want to try and chase down, and they might just be happy with that. Sila just getting far too deep, and Ritsu just turning and punishing him with the physical damage that this SF can do at this point. And that's Sila down for a good 70 seconds, and as you said earlier, with his investments that he's been making, he doesn't have any kind of buyback if Cloud9 are able to try and find the momentum to push, but there we go. Oh, Brax, he's going to be kept alive just in time by 1437 with a shallow grave, and he's going to TP out, but the cold feet ticks in and kicks in. Now he's going to go down, they'll lose the Razor. So LGD there, nicely jumping back in, making sure that Cloud9 can't relook really for anything during this duration of the Jarring Dead. And again, 1437 with these graves. Keeps him SS alive. Will the Ice Blast connect? No, it won't. He's going to be fine. Gets himself out. 
but LGD not happy that they lost their gyrocopter and proving that they can still fight. And here we go, going in for more punch onto Ritsu. They'll get the enchant home after Shock Proc, the Fisher as well, but they can't quite deal with Ritsu on their own. They don't have the damage to bite through the Shadow Fiend. Now LGD. And we'll look to back up at the old giant says He gets himself in! There'll be the snowball to dodge it, and he'll actually get himself four star out, so he's trying to retreat. But Cloud9, they want to chase LGD out, the Laguna Blade to the face of MSS, blowing up the Tin Cam out, and now Ritsu's in trouble. They've caught him out, the punch is there, he's come too far, he pops the BKB, but they pop him. They'll take down the Shadow Fiend, and they're looking for more. Maybe he's gonna miss the Light Strike array here, but he's looking to chase down 1437 on the Dazzle. It's only himself and the Bane left alive. Blink four from maybe. Real shallow grave himself, 1437. At the same time, LGD, they're looking for both. You've got ROTK and MMY trying to find Savage, and they will. They get the light strike, they get the punches in. He's down. It's a full team wipe. LGD fighting absolutely beautifully without the need of Siler on his gyrocopter sin. Yeah, it was all tactical from the beginning. Just losing Siler <laughs> to make Cloud9 come out of their base. Well, jokes aside, that was actually very, very beautiful. The defensive play there from LGD in response. It looked like a great hook shot, but the four staff as well as the snowball buying enough time for them to get out of there. Now the question is what buybacks they can force from Cloud9. We're going to see at least one come out, maybe both. There's the Shadow Fiend, that's the big one. And now Silas back. They've got to try and fight LGD again, but this time with the threat of that gyrocopter. I mean, we saw just then, it was kind of LGD just kind of poking them, going, Hey, come and get us, come and get us, and C9 tried to, and it just didn't look out. And now Fisher onto Ritsu. They blink forward. They close the cap. MSS is there with the hook shot. The Laguna Blade's been locked down. They can't quite kill Ritsu here. And they'll get that off the Requiem in time. Snowball comes across. They'll lose the Tusk as he comes in too deep. They did kill MSS on the clockwork. So it's a one for one there. It looks like LGD this time without the Tusk. They'll feel a little bit less confident in terms of hanging around. And they will now call it a day there after those fights in the mid lanes. Some quite some fights at the least. Of course, Cloud9 they do end up defending the base. They still have the racks in the mid lane alive. So the defense is successful. It was a costly one. There were a fair few buybacks coming through. And well, maybe Silas still hanging around here. And Weave's going to get laid down. They got RTK there as well. So I think Cloud9 are going to be a little bit more careful about coming out of the base looking for LGD. But this game certainly stepping up to be quite an interesting one. 50 minutes in. It still looks like LGD have a. Uh... Have pretty good control. Forcing that buyback on Shadow Fiend is a really big deal because killing him ends the game now. They have a very clear win condition that doesn't necessarily involve pushing high ground. So Ritsu has to be super careful in his plays, will have a harder time pushing out the waves because he simply has to play that bit safer. And LGD are starting to rack up the items. I'm I'm a little bit surprised he went for the Octarine Core and Lina. I think it's a cool item on a core Lina that's very rich. Uh, of course, lowering all the cooldowns and getting all the spell lifesteal is very nice. Ooh. And what do you reckon about this? So Brax, with all the money that he was saving up, he decided to just buy the Scardi here on the Razor. Nah. You're not a fan. It's a bit of a middle-of-the-road item, really. It just I, I, I get the idea that they're trying to tank up really hard on their heroes and just try to outlast, but I think a Shivas would have done almost the same in that regard. Of course, he gets more raw health against Lena's spell burst, but they already had he already had a lot of health, and of course the the shallow grave and the heals from Dazzle keep him alive. And Lena doesn't want a Laguna the Razor at all. So I, I don't think this is ambitious enough in terms of winning the game rather than just staying in it. I mean, maybe that's what they need to do at this point, just buy time for them to get more items across the across the board on all their heroes. But you know, as we've already seen, there's a lot of scary stuff that has been picked up by LGD. And LGD still, of course, playing with this 25,000 net worth and XP advantage. They're going to try and do something on the bottom lane here, maybe. Moves forward with the Sheevers. Isn't going to quite clip Ritsu. That'll be the Ice Blast flying through. And says, oh, he hook shots the backside of Brax. I'm not be able to find anything off the back of that one. That's down for 50 seconds. No acronyms on this clock one. And Roshan is now back up. So we'll see when LGD may even just back up and look for the Rosh, look for the Aegis. And looks like that might be what they do here. Cloud9 are coming out the base. So LGD might have their attention to draw back towards the fight towards the bottom. They're starting to move back, and it looks like they'll head into the pit, at least uh, the Tusk is. So they know, then they know the Roche is there. And they've got a Satanic now on Scylla. They can it's get an Aegis as well for the, for the lineup. It's, it's going to be even harder for Cloud9 to defend. Uh, and with this Satanic, Scylla can just solo Roche with no risk. He's going to be at full foot pretty much all times. I mean, at this, but does he, get, help him, does he let someone hold the SM1? Does he hold the Aegis himself here, or does he let someone else on the team take it? Hmm. I'm trying to... I think they might put he, it on Lena over Yule's. Does he get rid of the phase boost to someone so he can rely on the Buster to move? He did drop the SNY, surprisingly. He dropped the SNY? Okay. 
Well, I, of course he is the main hero that they want to have knocking on the front door and just hitting towers, so yes. maybe for that reason it's okay. Um, we'll probably just keep the courier on backup so that they can fly in immediately if he dies. No, nope. it's a mech flying out for MMY. Very, very late mech for him. I guess I do believe they didn't use it yet, right? He, he would have had it on him instead of the urn in that case. And there's well, swapping it for cheese. Now we'll probably go to AA. Actually, DDC carrying around that SNY for now. Hey, who's got who's got the cheese at the moment on LGD? Uh, the courier. Oh, they just put it on the courier. Okay, so they're not. Oh, they're keeping the car on the sidelines. Hook shot from MSS on the sidelines. Goes straight on, and there's a Fiend script onto DDC. Branks, he's got the BKB, and they're trying to fight this one here. Looking onto Scylla, but he got the assault buff, on him. but look at the damage from Ritsu. They've already managed to melt through three of the heroes, popping the ages of the Gyro, and now Brax is trying to move forward for more. There's a Yule set to the Light Strike holding him back, but Cloud9 is doing a lot of damage here. Scylla is going to try and move in and try and fight. Looking for Brax here. Brax, he's fairly tanky. Is he tanky enough? He needs Ritsu to get himself back in and get the punches for him. Here comes Ritsu, moving forward. They're looking for Scylla. They'll get the slow step with the Scardi. Snowball for from MMY, they will find the kill onto Brax, but Rich is there trying to clean up. Sila doing work though with their RTK, the Echo Slam. They managed to bring down the Shadow Fiend, and that is now a Shadow Fiend dead for 100 seconds. There'll be buybacks from Brax, buybacks from MSS, but now RTK moving forward, gets the stun onto the Razor. Maybe he's there fighting with Death, getting the Laguna Blade in. Now the Snowball forward, they're not done. He's the last man standing, MSS, but not for too longer, as he should go down, and he will. Triple kill for Sila. GG is called, and LGD take the game 53 minutes in. That was such a key buyback from uh, Xiao, uh, I was about to say Xiao, from ROTK here yeah, on the Shaker. He dies. Back in. Bootser travels back into the fight and gets a very good Fisher and Echo Slam off. And they just they just beat Cloud9 on numbers in that fight. I actually think that was a really good attempt from Cloud9 with the wraparound smoke, the good opening angle that they found. At the end of the day, too much money on LGD, too many items. And of course. I think this was a pretty good showing from Cloud9, yeah, considering they certainly had their highlights. how hard the...